If you're going to be a good batsman, firstly, you must have a correct grip and a comfortable stance. The correct grip for a right-hander is the V between the thumb and the index finger should be pointing straight down the back of the bat. And that's for the bottom hand. For the top hand, the V should be pointing at the knuckle on the bottom hand. The hands should be close together. So that's uh, pretty well a correct grip for the right-hander. Stance, well, your feet should be about the same distance apart as your shoulders, but basically what feels comfortable for you. Knees just slightly bent. Always put the bat at the back of the toe, not between the feet. That is the best position for the correct back lift. Right, now you're ready to face the bowler. Having a tense start. First morning of a test match, the fate is looking for line and length. It's important to remember that only four things happen when you bat. You either play forward or back, you either defend or attack. So every time the ball is bowled, you've only got to think about doing two things. The attacking shots in cricket are based on the solid forward defence and back defence movements. So that's why it's terribly important to have a good foundation of a solid defence. When it came to a solid fortress, there was no better man than former Australian captain Bill Laurie. Cartwright made up England's trio of new fast bowlers. Laurie hits him for six, as he did Price and Runzi. It's an exciting challenge opening the batting for Australia or for your club. The part about being an opening batsman is that when you go out to the wicket, you are equal with the bowler. There hasn't been a run scored or a wicket hasn't fallen. So really it's a position of confidence. I always felt that I had an advantage going in first because I was going out there before the bowl had found line or length and I was extremely confident in my ability maybe to work the ball and pick up a single or two in the early overs. But it's common sense really. You treat the bad balls and try and put them away and you defend against the good balls. Magnificent shot by Greenwich. Hammered that straight drive down the ground. The forward defence is very important, particularly when the bowler is swinging the ball or indeed if a spinner is turning the ball a lot on a turning wicket. And the main uh, ingredient of being successful when playing in a forward defensive shot is to get your foot to the pitch of the ball. As soon as your mind's eye decides that you're going to play a forward shot, you must try and get your foot as close to the pitch of the ball as possible and then everything else will follow in order. Colin McDonald, the great Victorian opening batsman, gave me some advice when I was a schoolboy coming into the state side. He said, Bill, Batting is a side-on game, and I believe if you say side-on, get your foot to the pitch of the ball and give it the full face of the bat, you won't go far wrong. Keep it simple, but be confident in every move that you do make. Yes, he plays so straight and he's so organised. Classic piece of defence. The ball darting back at him and he's so straight and so side-on there and his feet move perfectly. The back foot defence probably is a little bit more simple in the fact that you've got that split second longer to make up your mind. But it's very important that when you go back, you go back the full length of your popping crease. I love watching Greg Chappell bat. I think he's the best defensive back foot batsman I've ever seen in modern cricket because he used the full width of the crease, got right back, stayed side on and gave the full face of the bat to every delivery that he wanted to defend. But certainly when you're playing against guys such as uh, Kirtley Ambrose or Wes Hall or Ray Lindell or Dennis Lilly, you need a great back defence. Having built up a good defence, then you need to learn how to deal with the loose balls. Remember that cricket matches are either won by a certain number of runs or a certain number of wickets. So they're the two most important components in this game of cricket, runs and wickets. One way of dealing with loose balls is with the drive shots which, as I mentioned, are an extension of the forward and back defence. That's a great shot. Straight down the ground. That'll be four. Into the fence it goes. And so that's the second boundary of the day's play. A lovely straight drive. Not a great start for full Newport. When driving, the front foot shouldn't be pointing straight down the pitch. It should be at an angle of 45 degrees. As you move into the shot, the front elbow should be up and as you make contact the bat should follow through in the direction you want the ball to go. 
If you adhere to those principles, you'll become a good driver on either side of the wicket. The only thing that needs to change is the position of the front foot. This should always go towards the pitch of the ball. It's a lovely shot. He's hit three really good drives so far in this innings, and that was the third one. They've all gone for boundaries. Beautifully struck by Jones. What a glorious on drive. And that brings up his 50. He's in rare touch is Dean Jones, and it's good to see. He certainly is in rare touch. He's given us some 50. If you really become proficient and confident, you may want to attempt the lofted drive. Viv Richards is the master of this shot, and he's not fussy who he plays it against. Viv's after him. Have a look at Richards here. Down the wicket he comes and whack. Oh dear, oh dear. That could be a six. That's a great hit. Straight down the ground. Over long on. What a magnificent player. No real drama there for Viv. Almost just caressed that over the fence. Then there's the square drive. One of Alan Border's favourites. coaching tape you can be putting together at home or in your coaching school and border typical of the great left handers he will hit the ball off the front foot square of the wicket he opened up the face just ambling through he realized there was going to be a boundary the back foot drives are also an extension of the defensive shot steve war excels at these great shot that takes him to one short of the half century and this has been a good innings from Steve Waugh because he's been beaten a few times he got a he got a torrid time from Neil Foster when he was starting out so we watched that favorite shot of his that back foot drive but every time the bowlers have made a mistake he's put them away and there's the 50 what a great way to bring it up both the front and back foot leg glances are also an extension of the defensive shots. Here's Bill Laurie with some thoughts on how to play them. Because of modern field placing, one of the two most important shots I believe in an opening batsman at Armoury is the leg glance, whether it be on the front or the back foot. The front foot glance, I think, is a shot that can make a batsman work the ball nicely against good tight bowling in the early overs. It's very important, as you do in the forward defensive shot, that you get the pitch, foot to the pitch of the ball, give the ball the full face of the bat, but then at the last minute, you turn your wrists and glance either fine or square. The laws today only allow two fieldsmen behind the square leg umpire, so in fact the leg glance can be a very profitable shot in the early overs when the field is attacking. The back foot glance is also a very profitable shot for top order batsmen, but you have to be careful when you're playing the back foot glance that A, that you keep the leg covering the leg stump well intact and you glance the ball square enough to evade the wicketkeeper. Once or twice we've seen in recent days batsmen like um, Jeff Marsh of Australia glancing too fine and being caught behind by the wicketkeeper. It's very, very important that you hold your position covering the leg stump, give it the full face of the bat, but make sure that you work the ball well square of the wicketkeeper. But the back foot glance is certainly a shot that should bring top order batsmen many runs against good fast bowling. It's a nice shot by Richardson getting right inside of it and deflecting it from off leg stump. But McDermott's line, which was disappointing as well in the first innings, when he strayed down the leg side, again proving costly for Australia. Your ability to deal with fast bowling will be enhanced if you can play the horizontal bat shots well. My old skipper, Les Favell, once said to me, you'll never make international cricket, son, if you can't hook or cut. Certainly helps if you can play one of them, and probably even better if you can play them both well. Let's start with the cut shots. The important thing here, first movement is the back lift. Good solid back lift. And then the back foot goes across towards off stump. So as you're in the correct position to hit the ball. Then you come down on the ball and roll the wrists on contact. That'll bounce straight back off ultra. Right, 
goodness, he's hit that well. And if you want a left-handed example, look no further than Australia's champion, Alan Border. Great shot. Loose delivery, but uh, still has to be hit for four, and it was beautifully played by Border. Yes, it was a lovely shot. That takes him to 49. He's received 110 balls in this innings, but have a look at this. Short outside off stump, magnificent timing and placement. The cut shot is played to the ball just outside off stump. If the ball is short and coming up towards your chest area, then the pull shot is the correct shot to deal with that one. The movements are very similar. First thing, the back lift. Then the back foot goes back and across to off stump. Keep your eye on the ball, and once again you hit down on it and roll your wrists to place the ball away in front of square leg or perhaps just behind square. That's wonderfully hit. It wasn't that short. And Richardson spotted it early and really put back to ball. And that's probably the best pull shot we've seen in this match. Not only did he pull it square, but he kept it down. He hit straight to ground. Bouncing just past the umpire, never lofting to the outfield. Richardson plays the shot in the traditional fashion off the back foot. But Viv Richards often plays the more difficult version off the front foot. That's beautifully played. <laughs> that was off the front foot as well, Nemo. That's four. Pulled just forward of the square leg umpire. Superb strike. There's not too many players in the world that can play that sort of shot. It's just, it's sensational. And coming forward and then just transferring his weight onto the back foot and uh, just caressing that ball in front of square leg. And that's a sensational shot. You won't see a better shot anywhere than this that's just beautiful okay you've just cut the fast bowler for four then you've pulled him for four now he's mighty angry he charges in bangs one in a bit shorter still and it's going to rise up to around about head height here's where you need a good hook shot most important with the hook shot don't try and hit the ball too hard the movements very similar to the pull shot back lift back foot goes back and across to off stump so that your head is inside the line of the ball Remember, the ball hasn't got radar. It won't miss you, you've got to miss it. Right, you're inside the ball, now you hit down on it, roll your wrists, and at the same time your feet swivel so that you finish up facing in the direction where you hit the ball. That's beautifully hooked. That's one way to stop a fair amount of short pitch bowling. Keep hooking them like that. Yes, that's the best way by miles that's uh, a magnificent shot two men back down there and uh, this shot hit straight into the gap very firmly and with a lot of ease too no real problems there here's a tip when you're facing a fast bowler who's bowling short and angling the ball across you towards the slips don't try and hook it to fine leg smash it away in front of square leg play the pull shot and if it's wide enough even smash it straight back at him that'll soon stop his short pitch stuff having dealt with the quick bowlers let's move on to the spinners What's required here is quick, decisive footwork. Alan Border is a perfect example. That's outstanding footwork from Alan Border. Can stick that one in the coaching manual. Magnificent shot from Alan Border. One, two, three on the half volley and pierces that gap. That is magnificent. My method varied slightly from Alan Borders in that I crossed my feet on the second movement. The best way to learn good footwork is to do it at walking pace. Three paces you come out of the crease and deal with the spinners. Look at the distance that you're out of your crease, a good couple of metres. That really changes the length of the ball. Most batsmen tend to move slightly onto the ball of the front foot against the spinners. From there they can quickly push back to deal with a short delivery. In the other matches and that's a beautiful shot from Haynes he's backed away giving himself plenty of room and hit that straight through between point and cover the gap beautifully once again that's a good example of the improvement in Desmond Haynes footwork started to come forward as soon as he picked up the fact that it was short he was quickly onto the back 